A few weeks back, Bruce Springsteen fans were outraged to find that ticket prices for his current tour was high as $5,000. Springsteen's fans have never felt cheated until now. 5,000 bucks a piece? $5,000. Would you really pay $5,000 to go see your favorite band? No. I can't do that. That's I, a bit much. We can thank a predatory new business practice for that. It was introduced by Ticketmaster and they call it dynamic pricing. It's an experimental technique and it's pissed off everyone, from fans to venues to performers themselves, including the boss. So how can Ticketmaster get away with it? Because they are the bullies of the music industry playground. Ticketmaster and Live Nation, which is the same company, but we'll get to that later, can basically do whatever they want because they have seized control over every aspect of the live music industry by creating a monopoly. This ticketing cartel has the power to destroy venues and artists who refuse to work with them. They even have their own resale platform and they encourage and incentivize ticket resellers to gouge fans. All of these exploitative practices make Ticketmaster execs very, very rich. Live Nation CEO Michael Rapino made $70.6 million in 2017. That's one of the largest CEO pay packages ever. But here's the twist. This entire monopoly was helped along and enabled by our elected leaders. So how do we get to a point where the people in charge of preventing monopolies are enabling monopolies? And more importantly, how can we take back power from Ticketmaster and their monopolistic brethren? Let's take a look. I'm Cory Doctorow, and this is The Classroom from More Perfect Union. I'm gonna have to give you a brief history lesson on antitrust law. That's the government's toolbox for fighting monopolies. I wrote a whole book about it. It's called Choke Point Capitalism, and I wrote it with my friend Rebecca Giblin. Now, the glory years of antitrust were right after FDR's New Deal. The government saw that monopolies weakened worker power, and so they set to breaking up these giant corporations and to preventing future monopolies from forming. Back then, monopolies were viewed as a threat to the very idea of democratic citizenship. Then in the 1970s, a conservative legal scholar named Robert Bork and his pals at the University of Chicago School of Economics started spreading a very different view of antitrust. They said, forget about all that high-minded crap about democracy and citizenship. Instead, anti-monopoly regulators should limit themselves to thinking about consumer welfare. Basically, they focused on short-term goals like lowering prices rather than promoting competition in and of itself, and most importantly, preventing the gross power abuses of monopolies. Antitrust enforcement fell by the wayside as a priority. The Democratic Party platform didn't even mention antitrust once between 1992 and 2016. This is what allowed for the growth of monopolies in every industry, meatpacking, tech, banking, finance, eyeglasses, cheerleading, beer, and in 2010, <laughs> the music industry. For 15 years prior to their merger, Ticketmaster was the dominant provider of ticketing services in America, controlling 80% of the market. Live Nation was the largest concert promoter in America. They controlled America's biggest concert venues and the artists themselves. They managed 200 major artists from Miley to Willie. And Live Nation was Ticketmaster's number one customer. Live Nation used Ticketmaster to sell tickets for venues and artists that Live Nation managed. But in 2007, Live Nation thought, hey, maybe we should build our own ticketing platform. Ticketmaster did not like that. And so just two years later, Live Nation and Ticketmaster announced a merger, which sounds like a clear antitrust problem. Isn't someone supposed to be on top of that? At the time, the Obama DOJ's top antitrust cop was Christine Varney, who said, I understand that consolidation has been going on in the industry for some time. Those are meaningful concerns, but many of them are not antitrust concerns. So there you go. The two most powerful companies in the live music industry join forces and it's not an antitrust concern. They were slapped with a few restrictions when they merged. A few. Antitrust mostly relies on two kinds of remedy, structural and conduct. Structural remedies are about actually breaking up parts of a giant consolidated empire. Conduct remedies are about changing behavior, regulating anti-competitive business practices, and regulating how giant companies wield their power. 
conduct remedies are pretty ineffective because they're really hard to actually enforce. The consent decree that the Ticketmaster Live Nation corporate empire got was a mix of structural and conduct remedies, but essentially it all boiled down to a pinky swear. Live Nation had to promise that they wouldn't use their power over events and venues to grow their ticketing dominance. The combined company violated their consent decree with impunity because, like a playground bully, they had created a culture of fear where no one else in the live music industry would speak out against them. When we interviewed people for our book, we always gave them the option not to be named, but almost nobody took us up on it, except for those people we spoke to about Live Nation. In most cases, those sources were anxious about even speaking off the record. There's no conduct remedy that can address that kind of power. Structural remedies are more effective because they force monopolies to break off portions of their power. Ticketmaster was forced to sell portions of their empire to much smaller companies, but it was barely a dent. Now, 12 years later, we're seeing a company whose power is so vast that they could sell $5,000 tickets to see the guy who sings, poor men want to be rich, rich men want to be king, and the king ain't satisfied till he rules everything. We do mean everything. They've also dominated the ticket resale business. They have their own resale software. It's called Trade Desk. And in 2018, an investigation revealed that Ticketmaster had encouraged and incentivized resellers to set enormously high ticket resale prices. Ticketmaster loves resales for one simple reason. They get to charge their service fees twice, and those resales net them a second, more lucrative fee on the same product, the one they've already sold once. Live music isn't the only creative industry that has fallen prey to giant monopolies. Just three massive conglomerates own the major labels and publishers that control the world's music. Those labels design the streaming industry, which is dominated by Spotify, which itself was partially owned by those three same labels. Now that Disney owns 21st Century Fox, just one company controls 35% of the US box office. The publishing industry is controlled by five big companies. That number was six when we started writing our book, and if they get their way, it'll soon be four. That's just wildly quick consolidation. Yes, it's always been hard to be an artist, but the difference today is that corporations are extracting the maximum capital from artist labor, and they're not sharing it anymore. We creative workers, we know that our music, movies, and other culture markets are in trouble. In the past, we were told to rely on copyright if we were gonna hold on to our rights and our values. But copyright does nothing to solve a problem like Ticketmaster. Giving us more copyright in these monopolized markets is like giving more lunch money to your kid who's getting his lunch money taken off of him by bullies every day. No matter how much money you give him, the bullies are gonna take that money every day too. And the problem isn't just that artists are getting ripped off, and it's not just that fans and small business owners are getting ripped off. It's that monopoly threatens the overall health of our democracy itself. Now I've got good news. The Biden administration, yeah, the Biden administration, took a strong stance against monopoly power. Remember when we were talking about the prevalence of Bork and that theory of antitrust that said we shouldn't do anything unless prices are going up? This administration came out against that sort of thinking, and they handed down an executive order that charged the DOJ to police monopolies and protect consumer autonomy and privacy. That's an admission that monopolies are about more than just prices. If they're serious about this, the Ticketmaster monopoly has to be on the DOJ's agenda. We need to break up the bullies. Ticketmaster bullies venues into not working with their competitors. They bully smaller artists by denying them management. They bully big artists by controlling their ticket prices and letting their fans down. And they bully customers into paying exorbitant prices for tickets, not only by enabling resellers, but by collecting massive fees on every ticket those resellers sell. All of this amounts to an environment where competition has been totally removed from the live music ecosystem making it worse for everyone except Ticketmaster and Live Nation executives who are making millions of dollars a year. We have to act now. Biden's DOJ should take up and review this case due to Ticketmaster's continued violation of their consent decree. We need to unwind this monopoly and break them up 